is you rotate a wheel in one direction, the wheel on the other side will rotate in the opposite direction. This is because the differential has less resistance than the drive shaft. So with the drive shaft not moving, one wheel will always move in response to the other. As you can see on the other side with the bungee cord and the rags in place, directly opposite these. Same happens to the rear axle. As you can see here, when this wheel is rotated backwards, the rear wheel on the other side of the tractor will rotate forwards. Again, differential has less resistance than the drive shaft. So the drive shaft doesn't rotate, the thing that will rotate the other wheel. What we do now is we chalk that other wheel from moving. Now, with the wheel over there chalked, we can rotate this wheel, but it takes a lot more effort to rotate, and the wheel on the other side isn't moving. That's because we're turning the entire drive line of the tractor at this point. If you rotate the rear wheel slightly back, this will eventually, as you rotate the drive line, cause the splines to line up and it will move up into the four-wheel drive position. Now when you rotate this drive wheel backwards with the other wheel chopped, not only are you turning the drive line, but you're now also turning the entire four-wheel drive transfer case mechanism of the tractor. Mm -hmm. So what you can see here is with this wheel being turned, the tractor is in four-wheel drive mode. So with the other wheel chopped, turning the drive line, the only thing that can happen is the lower drive shaft has to turn as well. So as you come down underneath, what you'll see here is as this wheel goes backwards, that drive shaft is rotating. That shaft goes through a ball socket joint or a type of sliding ball joint to the front differential. That is not engaged right now. So the brake lies somewhere underneath the end of that drive shaft and the corresponding socket assembly leading into the front differential. Now, if I try to jimmy this a little bit back and forward on its spring, I can't get it to engage. So now we're going to have to take that assembly apart and figure out what's really broken here. So what you can see here is that drive shaft is freely rotating in the drive socket. The drive socket itself is not moving. The shaft is. That's because the ball bearings have fallen out. The way to make it do this is with the one rear wheel chopped and rotating this wheel here by hand. You end up rotating the shaft because the drive line, now that it's in four-wheel drive, that is now connected. So, with the balls firmly in place, and you rotate this one chalked rear wheel, the one free rear wheel backwards, with the ball bearings now firmly in place, the circlip reset, the one rear wheel is still chalked, so when we rotate the other rear wheel backwards, it turns the shaft, which turns the differential. The rear wheel on the front wheel on the other side is not turning because as we pan back here a little bit, our front wheel in the foreground is turning, but this is really hard to do lying on the ground. So hopefully you saw that that one rear wheel moves. In this transmission, when it's in four-wheel drive and one rear wheel is moving, unless the other rear wheel is moving in the opposite direction at the same speed, one of the front wheels has to turn as well.